Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series I'm putting together where we are taking uh, the XR2 from Cape Canaveral all the way out to the orbit of Jupiter with the eventual goal of landing on Io. And as you can see here, we have made it. We're at Io. And in the last video, we started our braking burn at Io, but it's such a huge burn that I actually decided to go ahead and in the last video, mid burn, and you can, as you can see, it's paused. So we're just going to pick up right where we left off. So let's switch camera views and jump back into it. Let me unpause right away so that we can continue our burn. And as you can see, I'm using the Aero Freighter, but at the time I made the recording, the Aero Freighter is not available for general download. So unfortunately, I can't put a link in the description where you can get it. But who knows, maybe by the time this video comes up on YouTube, it will be available. And if I ever remember, you know, whenever in the future it becomes generally available, I'll try to come back to this video series, edit the description, and say, hey, you can finally get it. All right, we are... So our eccentricity is coming down. Our PEA is uh, going up a little bit because I'm trying to get it closer to 200. We still have 490 seconds left on this burn. This is a very large burn. I was having a little bit of trouble with time warp, so I'm not doing too much with that. Um, I'll try to do a little bit of time warp here and there, just for the sake of time, but, uh, yeah, just a little bit here and there. So our PEA is almost at 200, it's getting pretty close. Now I notice my time to the periaps is actually starting to count up. So I, I could probably actually cancel this burn, get a little bit closer in, but I think we're just gonna go ahead and continue with the burn for now. All right, let me be a little careful here. Uh, I'm rotating a little bit out, yawing the vessel a little bit out to keep that PEA under control. Trying to keep that PEA under control. So yeah, the time to the periapsis is counting up. Um, not what I want, not what I want. Let me do this, let me think. to cancel our burn and we're just going to deal with the rest of this manually so how do I cancel this I don't even know if you can reset I guess that's how you do it and we're not going to do like an orbit circularization using burn time at least not yet so because the problem is if we're getting farther away for if the peri if we're basic basically pushing the periapsis further ahead um, our burn isn't as efficient as it could be not that it hardly matters considering this was such a ridiculously huge burn but we'll, we will do uh, a little bit better maybe to uh, you know we'll do what we can to try to you know minimize fuel usage um, it's, it's like a token <laughs> effort though all right so we are so according to this, we're 551 seconds from the periapsis. According to this, we're 200, and we're, I don't even, this, this, this is probably irrelevant, actually. This is probably, yeah, this is probably Jupiter. That's probably not referencing Io. So let's go ahead and warp time forward just a little bit. Let's go down to, say, 450 seconds, and then we'll start up the burn again and see if our periapsis time's going down. So we're just about there, so let's actually go to 400. So coming up on 400, there we are basically. So let's start the burn back up. And the time's still going up, so let's go down to 300. Because ideally, what you would actually do, uh, like in a, in a perfect simulation, you would get all the way down to periapsis and you would do 100% 
of your burn in, in that in that single picosecond. But of course that's not possible. And the time, so the time's kind of frozen right here at this point. So let's go down a little bit lower. I'll get a little bit closer to the time to the periapsis. <clears throat> rotate up so that we're level with the line and let's go all the way down to 200 seconds this time and we're almost there that's 200 start the burn back up and time is coming down but not very fast so I think it's going to hit a point where it's going to go back up so let me go forward just a little bit farther Hope, hopefully I'm not messing this up We'll go down to 150 seconds, and then we'll start to burn back up. It's almost there. So that's basically 150. So, and the time is coming down. All right, so we're going to go with that for now. So PEA is about 190.5, so pretty close to 200. I wonder now that I have uh, Io as the primary gravitational influence if, yeah, now it's, yeah, now now it, now the burn time calculator is giving me the correct time to the periapsis. I wonder, let me, let me see something. If I do circularization, so, because cause it can do a, a calculation, and I think we can probably actually use burn time calculator for this now. But it can do an, it can do a calculation to figure out a more efficient time to start the burn, and we did start it a little bit early, but that was intentional. So let's go ahead and warp time four, get closer to the time to begin the burn. So we're about nine seconds out, five seconds out, two seconds out. Here comes the burn, and once again, if I rotate just a little bit outward, uh, should bring up my periapsis closer to 200, which is the altitude I chose. Uh, probably won't be able to get this perfect, but we'll get as close as we can. Looks like I'm going to have to rotate a bit more outward if I want to bring it up. There we go. That's still coming up really slow, though. And if we want to gain, like, basically another 10 kilometers, let's rotate. Let's go all the way to 170. Right there. So about 9 more kilometers to gain on our periapsis. And as centricity is coming down, starting to look something like an orbit around Io. Let's take a quick look out. Um, let's see. Uh, we're yeah, without ambient light, it's you can't really see anything. But at least we can see the glow. Oh, we can see Jupiter right there. Okay, we're starting to get offset here. All right, we've passed periapsis, so I actually need to rotate inward now in order to keep my periapsis from going there were captured so now my periapsis is going up so now that we're captured I don't have to worry quite so much because uh, we can orbit IO a few times to get our orbital uh, to get our orbit kind of established however we want but we'll get we'll do as good of a job here as we can but again yeah we are captured now so now we don't have to worry about slinging off and ruining our mission so 194 on the PEA it's kind of what I'm watching a lot right now 195.5.6 so we're yeah we're getting pretty close so let me get ready to kill the engines and actually burn time calculator killed the engines for me uh, we are past periapsis by quite a bit now so I'm not really going to try to um, improve 
the orbital circularization right now. Um, we're 300 APA is pretty good. What we could maybe do is a uh, translation. Let's see, that's not no, it's not what I have in mind. Okay, so all right, let's uh, let's take a look and consider things. So we are in orbit around Io, and this is our orbit um, path around Io. Let's change the display lines to orbit plane. Take a look. So it looks like you know eventually this part of the orbit, like this part of the orbit here, will be passing over the base. So if we look at base sync MFD and target IO base. That's not spelled right. Then in some um, number of orbits out, let's put in the full number and cycle through. So yeah, you can see in 15 orbits we'll be passing more or less right over top of the base. Okay, so number like, uh, let's do 15 because that's what I saw. Okay, <clears throat> now that's changing rapidly, so who knows what it's going to be by the time we actually get closer to that 15th orbit. But we do have a chance then to um, maybe refine our orbit a little bit. So let's go around Io one time. And when we get back around... See, I don't know how well this is going to hold together. You know what I think maybe we might want to do? Instead of a 200 by 200, maybe we should aim for 300 by 300 because that is a lot of change. But let's see what happens when we get around to Apoapsis. Yeah, let's let's maybe plan on doing that. Let's bring up the let's bring up our periapsis closer to 300. So instead of like a 200 by 200, we'll go for something more like a 300 by 300, but with with but with these gravitational bodies being as Rotation. strong as they are, um, I don't think we're going to hold very well. And I wonder, I, I just, I wonder if if it's going to decay our orbit. Like if we time warp, is it going to decay the orbit to the point where we crash into the ground? I don't know. Let's get around to prograde. There's prograde. Jupiter out in front of us, very cool. I should probably switch back to this view because it's so much cooler. But I just was in the other view for a bit and forgot about it. So here comes prograde position. Pretty much there. Now let's go around to Apoapsis. Let's get really close. And bring up the other side of our orbit. Hopefully our ship isn't spinning way off. We have to take a look at that. And we're still pretty close. All right, so I'm going to bring up burn time calculator. Actually, let me just do that on this side over here because it's already yeah it's already up. So we'll switch over to time to apoapsis and we'll say circularize. So that's going to happen in about a minute, about a two and a half second burn, a little more. <clears throat> but we do need to be Translation. rotated <clears throat> according to uh, prograde because it burn time won't do that for us. Great MFD, but uh, you know it's not like the Swiss Army knife that is IMFD. Okay, so we're almost there. How much time to the burn? Another thirty-two seconds. You know what, I'm going to use this view for now. It'll just be a little bit easier on me. Although I wonder, <laughs> does Orbiter know that I have that other MFD open? It does. Okay. All right, so there we are. So we have uh, a pretty circular burn. Again, I don't know how well that's going to hold together because as we saw, as we were going around IO, you know, our periapsis and apoapsis were shifting pretty significantly. So, 
how are we doing on time? 15 minutes. So we're not going to be able to complete a deorbit on uh, during this video. That must be Europa. Nope, Ganymede. But let's go ahead and just warp time four, get closer to that orbit. That's falling apart, but it looks like it's still going to be the best orbit to choose. So let's just warp time forward and watch our orbital elements. You can see our apoapsis is climbing, our periapsis is holding stable for now. So a little bit faster on the time warp. Boy, that's going down. But now it's going back up. So as long as it oscillates, that's okay. But I worry that it will oscillate to a point where you know we're we're losing five or ten kilometers every orbit but so far it looks okay but we'll, we will watch our time warp we will be very careful although once we're in the xr2 all bets are off hopefully the aero freighter doesn't crash into io while we're inside the xr2 but it looks it looks like our apa is gaining a little bit each time because we were at like 318, now we're at 330. Okay, all right, cycle. So let's just get closer to the time when we want to undock the XR2. And then we'll end this video and move on to the next part. And I think what I might actually do also is right when we get close to, oh no. Oh, this suddenly changed. I'm still six orbits away from the one that I had initially chosen. Distance is going down, so we if we were going to pick this one for any reason we would we would have missed it. But I think what happened because the because the distances are changing, whatever this one was before, it just improved. But uh we're still a few orbits out. But what I was saying is what I what I think I'm gonna do when we get down to maybe three orbits away from that one, I'm going to circularize the orbit again. Yeah, because our, our APA is going up, our PA is going down. I don't like that. And I feel like, I feel like we would eventually just crash, uh, the aero freighter would just eventually crash. So actually, let's go ahead and circularize the next time around. How close are we to apoapsis? So we got a bit to go. Let's go back to real time. And let's begin rotating this behemoth. Okay. So a thousand seconds from apoapsis. Nine hundred, eight hundred. Get back to real time for a moment. Let me put in just control thrust in that direction a little bit more. Control thrust, a little bit more, a little bit more. Just trying to hold roughly at prograde so I don't have to correct. Don't have to correct by much. Coming up on the time to the apoapsis. So let's bring up burn time. And time to the apoapsis and circularize when we get there. And let's rotate back to prograde. And go with that for now. And I can see it's wanting to go that direction. Okay, so. Warping time forward. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Okay. Manually rotating the vessel into prograde. I wonder if this autopilot works now. Yeah, it looks like it works. Okay, so we'll go with the autopilot. 40 seconds from the burn, just a little bit of time warp. Speed up some of our, some of our maneuvers. And here comes the burn. All right, so we are in a 385 by 385 uh -huh. orbit around Io. Let me control s to save let me switch camera views so when we come back in the next part we're pretty close to the point where we can um, undock the xr2 
and uh, plan our base landing. So that's going to be the plan for the next video. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next part.